Hello and welcome to Cooking from the Pioneer Pantry. My name is Corey Van Zeitfeld. In this episode, we will explore the well-worn and sometimes scorned dried apple pie. Now, apple pie is one of America's favorite desserts. Dried apple pie, on the other hand, is a little bit more of a notorious history. Because in the 19th century, Colorado, it was a dessert that was made a lot and not always well made either. Some people were so sick of it. A poem came about on this topic. The poem is, I loathe, abhor, detest, despise, abominate dried apple pies. I like good bread. I like good meat. I like anything that's good to eat. But of all the poor grub beneath the skies, the poorest is dried apple pies. For our recipe to make our own good dried apple pie, we will need two sets of ingredients. So for the actual apple pie or the apple pie filling, we will need about three cups of dried apples, two and a half cups of hot water, and then to season and um, to season our apples, we'll need sugar, nutmeg, cinnamon, and flour. And this I'll just use to sprinkle on the top of the apples as I'm making the pie, making the dessert. And then over here, we'll need three cups of flour, a cup of lard, some water, and some salt to make our crust. To make our filling for our ap dried apples, we first need to reconstitute the dried apples. To do this, I will pour my hot water over the top of the apples and I'll let these sit for several hours. So once we're letting that cook or letting that soak, I'll move over to making my crust. To make our crust, what we will use is we have our flour, our salt, and our lard and our water. I will take a, um, my salt and actually I'll need more than that. And I will mix it into my flour. Make sure it's all incorporated. Once I've done that, I will take my lard and work it into my flour. And I'm using lard today because at the end of winter, you probably wouldn't have butter or other fats on hand to make your pie crust, but you probably would still have some sort of lard on hand. So I'm cutting it in with a knife and fork. You can use two forks for this, however you prefer. Sometimes I even use my hands, which I may get to that at today, we'll see. And you just want to incorporate it in so it's well mixed together. And I will use my hands. I find that this works a little easier to get the lard broken up and incorporate it into the flour. If I were using butter, I wouldn't do this. Um, butter crusts tend to be a little more finicky, so uh, the butter will melt and then it can throw off the consistency of your crust. Whereas I find lard's a little hardier, it doesn't have quite the same issue that butter does. Our crust is getting closer. You can see the lard is starting to break up into smaller crumbles. And it's becoming, I want it to be almost pea-sized crumbles before I add the water which that's looking good. I'll take my water and add a little bit at a time, mix it together and keep adding it. I think I might actually have used too much, but that's okay. Just want it to stick together. 
I'll go back in with my hand again. Make sure it's all mixed up. So now I know that my crust is ready once I squeeze a bit in my palm. And if it sticks together like that, I know that it's ready to be rolled out. Now that all of our ingredients are incorporated, I will divide the pie crust in half. As you can see, it's all nicely formed and stuck, stuck together. And I will have one crust for the top and one crust for the bottom. And I'll roll it out to create my bottom crust. I'm rolling it out and it's starting to stick. So I'm going to add a little bit of flour to my cutting board, smooth that out, and a little bit to my rolling pin. This will keep it from sticking. I think that's about right. So I'll roll it up onto my rolling pin. Easy transfer to my baking dish. Let it gently fall into there. Pinch up the outside edges so that I can form my outer crust easily. I have my bottom crust all formed and ready to go and ready for our filling and our top crust. Our apples have been reconstituting for several hours, and as you can see, they are much softer than they were before. They do have a little extra water in here. Uh, I will pour that out. I have a colander and a bowl that I will pour this into. all those good apples. Set that aside. How I like to make my pie is layer the apples with the seasonings and apples with the seasonings. You can mix them all together in a bowl and then add them to your pie, so it's personal preference. So I like to add my apple slices and if I'm feeling really pretty I will form them in a row shape in my pie. Um, probably won't do that today though. So I'll give myself a nice layer of apple slices on the bottom. Like that. And then I'll sprinkle a little sugar, a little flour, and then same thing with the cinnamon. And then the nutmeg, whoops. And I make sure to get all the apple slices well covered and well seasoned. And then I'll do that again. And as I'm filling my pie, I want to fill it nice and tall because as this bakes, this will collapse down. And we want it to be a nice full pie with plenty of filling to go around. And there we have our apple pie is all ready for its crust. I've rolled the top crust out, so now I'll put it on top of my pie. And I'll do the same thing that I did before, roll it onto my rolling pin. Easy way to transfer to my pie. And roll it on top. For this, you can get as fancy as you would like. You can plot it or weave the top, but today I'm going to be pretty simple. 
and my crust I just turn it the edges over a little extra crust than what I need for my pie plate but that's okay and for my crust I ended up using whole wheat flour rather than all-purpose flour because it's more similar to the flour that they would have used in the 19th century but you are welcome to use all-purpose flour or whichever flour you have on hand to get my crust to stay together I crimp the top using my fingers so I use the two fingers of both hands and squish them together like that and I find that keeps my crust fairly well stuck together and finally before our crust goes in the oven I will prick the top and I'm doing mine in the shape of a D and an A for dried apple pie. Now our crust is all ready to go in. I've brought my pie over to my Dutch oven where I will be doing the cooking today. My Dutch oven has been preheating over the fire and I've put it over my cooking coals. Now if I were to cook with my Dutch oven over my fire, it wouldn't give me an even heat. But using the coals or the hottest part of my fire, which if I look into my fire, it's the orange part, the very base of the logs. And I use those to cook with. I put them under my Dutch oven, and then I have this iron trivet that I'll put into the base of my Dutch oven. Now I do that so that my pie, the bottom of my pie doesn't burn or, or overcook before the rest of the pie does. To put my pie into the oven, I take a heat pad and I drape it over the bottom of the oven and the side of the oven. This will protect my hand as I'm putting the pie into my oven. So I do that like so, making sure to pull out my um, heat pad. Don't want this to cut, catch fire in the oven. Then I'll put my lid on top. The next thing I'll do is get more coals from my fire and put those on top of my Dutch oven. And this will ensure that I have an even heat throughout my whole oven. These ovens are specifically made for cooking with coals. And you can tell that in two ways. There are legs on the bottom of my oven that allows a flow of air to go under the oven. And then on my lid, there's a lip that holds the coals in place so they don't slide off the top of my oven. Now to check to make sure that my oven is hot enough, I'll hold my hand over it and count to 10. If I can count to six or seven before it gets too hot, then I know it's about 350 degrees. I'll let this bake. It can bake anywhere from 45 minutes to an hour and a half, depending on how hot your oven is. If you'd like to dry your own apples at home, there are a few ways that you can do this. One way is I peeled my apple and cut the core out of the middle so that I have this ring. And I'll take a long, sturdy piece of cord and string it through the hole onto my cord or my thread. And I'll tie a knot at the top. And this is important because this will keep my dried apples separate when they are hung up to dry. And it doesn't need to be a fancy knot, just square knot will do. And then you can hang these up in an out of a way place to dry. Just make sure that you take them down once they dry 
so they don't become a roost for flies, as our poem said earlier. If you want to make something that's a little prettier for decoration, you can cut your apple crosswise so you get these little stars on the inside. These, I think, are the inspiration partially for our poem because I have a cord that I made this winter. And as you can see, it has the stars in the center, which are actually the seeds cut into pieces. And I left the, the outer peel on. So if I were to make dried apple pie with this, this would probably make a pretty tough and hard to eat pie. So this is probably the inspiration for our dried apple pie poem. So if you want something that's a little more palatable, I would recommend taking off the peels and the inner core. Let's check to see if it's ready. Lift the top off and it's a nice golden brown. The crust is firm, so I'd say that's done. I'll remove this little piece of soot we have here. To take my pie out of my Dutch oven, I'll use my pot holder again and fold it into a kind of taco over my hand so that when I'm removing the pie, I again don't burn myself. Sometimes I might also have to use a knife or something to wedge it out. And here is our pie straight out of the oven. The pie is out of the oven and it's been cooling for a little while. Let's cut into it and see how it is. The nice crunchy crust. Scoop that in there. And there's our pie. As you can see, it looks very similar to regular pie. So thank you for joining us on making the good version of dried apple pie today. You can find the recipe and the poem at the City of Littleton website under the Littleton Museum page under Museum at Home. Thank you for joining us today.